it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine, where the long journey to a brighter tomorrow begins with a single step. In the past few weeks, uh, five high-profile bankers have died, all from apparent suicides. <laughs> Another one! Hmm? Another one just went past downwards. Must be a board meeting. I am your host, The Stimulator, and it seems like just about every other week, I get a message that goes something like this. Yo, Stim, big fan of the show. I just have one question. When are you going to do a sedition on anarcho-capitalism? Have you ever read Murray Rothschild? True anarchy is synonymous with free markets. For the most part, I don't respond to these types of questions. So for all of those of you who have asked me over the years, the answer is... <clears throat> Fuck anarcho-capitalism. Seriously. At best, the attempt to marry anarchism and capitalism is a nonsensical contradiction, and at worst, is the political equivalent of what would happen if Ayn Rand and Mussolini spawned a fedora-toting Austrian love child who happened to be born with a disease that it meant it couldn't go outside and so was forced to live its entire life confined to the bowels of online Reddit forums. Now, to be clear, as an anarchist, I'm all for smashing the state. But there's nothing particularly revolutionary or liberatory about smashing the state if it just means handing more power over to corporations. If anything, it only makes shit way fucking worse. And if you don't believe me, just ask the people of Flint, Michigan. We started to lose our hair, all five of us. And we started developing rashes on our arms and our face. Back in March of 2011, Michigan's ANCAP governor, Rick Snyder, I'm an accountant signed a bill which allowed for the special appointment of so-called emergency financial managers, which are essentially just a cabal of corporate technocrats who are granted the supreme authority to override decisions made by local governments, all in the name of market efficiency. Get in there, get the job done, get out. In 2014, in an effort to pinch some pennies, Flint's emergency manager, Darnell Early, switched the source of the city's drinking water to the heavily polluted Flint River, which is chock full of delicious, thirst-quenching industrial chemical solvent called trihalomethane. This toxic fucking slurry immediately began corroding the city's pipes, causing a trickle-down effect of sorts with shit tons of lead leaching into the water supply and ultimately exposing the city's 100,000 residents to severe fucking lead poisoning. I think in retrospect, uh, if we all had, uh, you know, 2020 hindsight, we'd do a lot of things different. I'm an accountant. I love you because you kill people. And now, impoverished Flint residents who can't afford to pay for their poison fucking water are getting their pipes shut off altogether. Stop the water shut off! Water is a human right! Just like their neighbors in the cash-strapped city of Detroit, where thousands of peeps have had their drinking water cut off, in strict accordance with the libertarian logic of the free fucking market. Or maybe you can ask peeps living in California's San Fernando Valley, who for months now have been dealing with a giant fucking natural gas leak. Hey, Stim, I got a natural gas leak for ya. Jesus fucking Christ, that's rank. You're a sick fuck agitator. Anyway, as I was saying, residents of the Porter Ranch community north of Los Angeles are currently facing the United Snakes' biggest environmental disaster since 2010 when the BP's Deepwater Horizon oil rig blew the fuck up in the Gulf of Mexico. For months now, a steady stream of methane has been spewing out into the Aliso Canyon underground natural gas storage facility causing a slew of health problems for local residents. I have terrible headaches, my daughter experienced stomach pain, my son's got nosebleeds. It's just really bad. Forcing the evacuation of thousands of peeps from the surrounding community and leading the state governor to declare a motherfucking state of emergency. To make matters even worse, methane is about 86 times more powerful than CO2 in terms of its greenhouse gas effect meaning that this fuck-up is making a gigantic contribution to the runaway climate change already fueling a historically unprecedented regional drought. At its highest level, this leak accounts for a whooping 25% of California's total emissions, roughly equivalent to the effects of driving 4.5 million fucking cars every single motherfucking day. 
This epic clusterfuck has been compounded by the fact that Southern California Gas, the company which owns the site, inexplicably removed the facility's emergency shutoff valve and never replaced it. No doubt because doing so will have cost them money that they didn't want to spend. And since the leak is 8,000 feet underground and extremely hard to get, it's expected to take several months to fix, meaning that there's nothing that peeps can do but wait for the free market to do its magic. Fuck anarcho-capitalism. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Now stop bugging me about it. Trappers who don't hold heat, gangsters who don't stroll streets, next level criminality, keep it shit low key. Not like Bobby Smurders, dumbass, what they do to Shmoney, though. I mean, they show money, then the police dance on our bones, it's time to overthrow.